To position the abductor spars for anterior approach total hip arthroplasty procedures, loosen the knob below the A rosette and set the A joint position to 6 or 7 for wide-hipped patients. Relock the A rosette handle. Loosen the knob below the B rosette and set the B joint to position 6 or 7, and then relock the B rosette handle. Ensure that both the A and B rosettes are set to the same position number. Adjust the abductor spars using the control handles so that the spars extend straight out as clinically required. Or refer to the illustrations on page 11 of the OT table setup guide. The traction boots of the OT1000 series table accommodate adult foot sizes from women's 4 to men's 14. Pediatric traction boots are available for smaller sized feet. Attach the traction boot to the fine traction assembly by placing the boot's adapter pin under the sole of the boot into the mating hole on the fine traction assembly. The adapter pin will drop in and click into place. Repeat as necessary for the other patient leg. Orthopedic procedures requiring skeletal traction may not require traction boots. Skip this step if a skeletal traction bow or bow block is used. The tabletop can slide in a transverse fashion from left to right to accommodate patient transfer onto and off of the table, to expose the surgical site, or to expose the anatomy for C arm imaging purposes. The tabletop must be leveled before manual unlatch buttons are available for use. First, ensure the head section is level and manually adjust as needed. Next, press the level tilt button on the hand control to ensure that the tabletop is level. The preferred method to translate the tabletop is through the illuminated buttons on the side of the tabletop. Press and hold the manual green unlatch button located on either side of the tabletop and then physically push the tabletop laterally left or right until it locks in position. Alternatively, the tabletop can be translated by unlatching the lateral slide through the buttons on the primary hand control. Press and hold the green unlatch button on the hand control and then physically push the tabletop laterally left or right until it locks in position. It is important to release the gross traction prior to patient transfer onto the bed. When the gross traction slide unit is installed, press the blue paddle lever on the gross traction assembly forward, away from the operator, to release the gross traction slide. Pull the entire assembly back toward the operator to create room on the patient surface for patient transfer. The table is now ready for patient transfer. Execute patient transfer using facility protocols for safe patient handling and ensure even patient weight distribution. Once the patient is positioned safely on the tabletop surface, adjust the tabletop by repeating the instructions to obtain the desired lateral tabletop position. The centered position is typical for anterior hip cases. Refer to pages 8 to 21 of the OT table setup guide to verify the appropriate tabletop slide position shown in the illustration. Ensuring proper patient foot placement in the traction boot will secure the patient's foot when traction is needed. Complete the following steps to ensure proper alignment in the boot. First, Loosen the middle strap of the traction boot by releasing the strap ratchet found on the back of the boot. Release tension by lowering ratchet assembly to the bottom of the boot. Loosen strap by pulling outward. If the buckles on the bootstraps are not released, open the three buckles by squeezing tabs and lace straps over exterior of the boot. Before placing the patient's foot in the traction boot, it must be first placed in a Steris traction boot disposable pad or prepped using local OR materials such as gauze wrap and coban. If using the Steris disposable pad, instructions for placement are located on the disposable pad itself. Once the foot is prepped with padding, ensure that the floating Achilles tendon pad is positioned appropriately as shown here and is not stuffed down into the heel area. Place the patient's foot into the boot so that the heel rests against the bottom foot plate and the foam padding shown here is as close to the patient's calf as possible. Ensure the Achilles pad is positioned against the Achilles tendon. Next, buckle middle strap and ensure the strap is directly over top of the ankle. On the underside of the boot, 
tighten the middle strap using the strap ratchet assembly until the ankle is secure. Finally, buckle the toe and calf straps and tighten straps securely. Ensure all buckles are centered. Failure to follow these steps could lead to the patient's foot slipping out of the traction boot. Repeat these steps with the other patient foot as clinically necessary. Some orthopedic procedures may only require one patient foot and leg in traction. A universal leg holder will be used for the other leg in these unilateral situations. Unlock the two knobs under the left and right side of the patient transfer board's prongs, found right above the abductor spar rosettes as shown here. Remove the patient transfer board and return to storage. There are two different perineal post sizes that can be chosen for orthopedic applications. The tall post is typically used for adults. The short post is typically used for smaller adults, teenagers, and children. Choose the perineal post that meets the clinical needs of the patient and desired positioning. There are two positions in the sacral rest to facilitate positioning requirements for a range of patients and to improve imaging area with unobstructed views. Most patients require the post inserted in the distal position. Taller patients typically require the post inserted in the caudal position. Place desired perineal post and pad into the appropriate hole on the sacral rest. Ensure the post is fully seated into the sacral rest's hole. Failure to ensure correct placement could result in patient injury during active traction. Finally, shift the patient snug against the perineal post. Ensure there is no space between the patient's perineum and the perineal post. The OT1000 series table is equipped with both an anesthesia arm board to help position the arm on the non-operative side of the body and a multi-position arm board to help position the arm on the operative side of the body to ensure patient arms are properly positioned during the procedure. Before attaching an anesthesia arm board, First, apply a socket clamp to the side rail on the non-operative side of the table. Next, apply the standard anesthesia arm board to the side rail of the table on the non-operative side. Adjust as needed to accommodate proper arm position. Apply the safety strap to secure the arm. Next, mount the multi-position arm board into the socket clamp, adjust the height and position of the arm board above the patient's torso, and tighten the socket clamp to secure. Place the patient's operative side arm into the multi-position arm board and apply the safety strap to secure the arm. Adjusting traction controls prior to pulling traction will help avoid complications. Press the blue paddle lever on the gross traction assembly forward away from operator to release traction slide. Adjust the gross traction slide to allow 2 to 3 inches of gross slide at the proximal end of the gross traction unit. Rotate the blue circular handle at the end of the fine traction unit for fine adjustment of the limber foot. Adjust the fine traction to allow 3 inches of additional fine traction adjustments, or as clinically necessary. Pull the paddle lever back toward operator to lock. As a note of caution, Always release the gross traction on a patient's leg prior to lowering spar below horizontal to avoid potential injury. For anterior approach total hip arthroplasties, a femur lift assembly is employed to position and articulate the operative femur. The setup involves six components. Select the femur drive table attachment and align its two plungers with the mating holes just above the abductor spar rosettes. Ensure the locked T handles are in the fully open position. Push femur drive table attachment into the mating holes until the posts bottom out. Tighten the T handles to secure. Select the femur drive S bracket attachment. Insert the S bracket into the femur drive table attachment on the operative side. There is no need to adjust or tighten the S bracket at this time. You will do this in a few moments. Select the femur positioner drive and attach it to the S bracket by aligning the attachment block with the S bracket's hole. Insert the femur positioner drive so that it is positioned closest to the patient's head on the operative side. Insert the mating components and secure by tightening the T handle on the S bracket. Plug the femur positioner drive's cord into the orthopedic table on the side of the column. Next, 
Attach the femur drive foot pedals cord into the orthopedic table on the side of the column. Activate the foot pedal switch to lower the femur positioner drive to its lowest position. You can now adjust the femur positioner gross height pin on the top of the femur positioner drive by pulling out the knurled knob on the side of the femur drive mechanism. Lift the gross height adjustment pin to the desired height, which is typically two inches below the midline of the patient's femur, and release the knurled knob so that the locking pin sits in place. Finally, adjust the distance of the femur positioner drive to the patient's hip by the width of a fist and tighten the knob on the table attachment to lock S bracket in place. When in an actual anterior approach total hip case, the femur positioner rail and femur hook will be used in the sterile field. At least two sterile drapes will be covering the femur positioner drive's gross height adjustment pin. Install the femur positioner rail over the draping and onto the gross height adjustment pin. The drapes will create a snug fit. Tighten the knurled thumb screw on the positioner rail to secure. Next, install the desired femur hook on the femur positioner rail. For the best anatomical positioning and exposure at the surgical site, there are several femur hook openings along the positioner rail. The surgeon will choose the best position along the rail to match the patient anatomy. To lift the femur position assembly and expose the femur for broaching, the femur positioner drive can be operated in two ways. The most common way is by surgeon-operated foot control. To operate through foot control, verify that the green LED light next to foot pedal connected on the primary hand control is illuminated, and press foot left or right on the foot pedal as desired to move up or down. Alternatively, to lift the femur positioner assembly and expose the femur for broaching, you can use the table's primary hand control. To operate through the primary hand control, verify that the green LED light next to lift connected is illuminated, and press and hold up or down button as desired. When setup is complete, the Steris OT table should look like this for the intended procedure. Refer to the OT table setup guide, pages 8 through 21, for written instructions on setting up the table for this orthopedic case. During an anterior approach total hip arthroplasty case, special positioning will be required for the operative leg. To achieve appropriate exposure, the surgeon will instruct the surgical nurse operating the table controls to rotate the operative leg externally to dislocate the operative hip after the femur's head has been cut. Typically, external rotation will be between 70 and 110 degrees. During the broaching phase of the surgery, the surgeon will instruct the surgical nurse operating the table controls to lower the operative leg to the floor and adduct the operative leg below the non-operative leg. This will provide exposure to the femoral shaft for broaching. Refer to this common anterior hip table positioning for reference only. Appropriate patient and clinical positioning may be different than what is shown.